All right, I've got to show you a little bit about how um, capacitors work. Um, so this is on page uh, 201 in the um, course notes. Um, just give you a little taste of how the um, how these things work in circuits. I'm going to start with the third problem because once you see how to handle this, the first two will be um, super straightforward after this. Um, so what we've got is a, a 9 volt battery and then two capacitors that are in parallel up, um, wired up above it. Uh, as you know, this is the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal. So when you first connect the circuit, these positive charges want to rush away from each other. And what they will do is they will rush to these empty plates um, and populate them until, they, until the plates fill up. Um, and then likewise with the negative charges on this side. Right. So once everything stops moving, um, if you're sitting at 9 volts here, you're going to also have to be at 9 volts here and here. Because if these voltages weren't the same, then there would be a flow of charge. But if things have stopped flowing, then um, the capacitors are full and you're, you're already at 9 volts there. Um, over here, everything's going to be at 0 volts once it's, once it's full. And so what you can do once everything has settled down um, is you can just directly apply the definition of capacitance to each capacitor to figure out how much charge has built up on it. So on this 3 microfarad capacitor, if we go to the definition of capacitance, which is C is Q over V, uh, what you see is we have a 3 microfarad capacitor here. So we're just going to use this uh, directly on that capacitor. So you have 3 times 10 to minus 6 farads. That's what the micro means. Uh, equals the charge, which we don't know yet, over the 9 volts that are across it. And so if you just multiply the 9 over, you'll get uh, the charge on that capacitor as 9 times 3, or 27 um, times 10 to minus 6 coulombs, um, or you could say 27 microcoulombs, either way. Um, so what that means, or what that charge is referring to, is that is the size of the charge that's on each plate, and it just happens to be positive on this side and negative on that side. Um, this capacitor that's underneath it, um, you can really do the same exact thing, but you notice it has double the capacitance, so it's just going to have double the charge. Um, but I'll just go ahead and show the calculation anyway. If you do C is Q over V on this guy, Q over V, um, your capacitance is 6 microfarads this time, 6 times 10 to minus 6. Uh, your charge, we in principle don't know yet, but we'll find it shortly. And you also have 9 volts across that guy. Um, so there's 9 volt drop. Um, 9 times 6 is 54, so you get a charge uh, on that capacitor of 54 times 10 to minus 6 uh, coulombs, um, or 54 microcoulombs. Now what's um, important about this, and what you can learn uh, straight away from this uh, when you have capacitors in parallel, is notice on the top one we have um, 27 microcoulombs, and on the bottom one we have 54. Um, and so if you look at the total circuit, um, so I'm going to do this off to the side here. If you, if you look at, if you use C equals Q over V on the entire circuit, um, the total capacitance, we in principle don't know yet unless you've seen this stuff before. The total charge is the charge on the top one plus the charge on the bottom one. So it's going to be 27 plus 54 um, microcoulombs, which is going to make 81. Um, so you're going to have 81 um, times 10 to minus 6 coulombs over 9 volts. And so what you end up learning then is the total capacitance, C total then, is 81 over 9, or 9 times 10 to minus 6 farads. And so what you find out then is the grand total capacitance is 9. Well, you had a 3 microfarad capacitor and a 6 microfarad capacitor. Um, by connecting them in parallel, you're basically just connecting that plate to this plate by a wire. So those two might as well just be one bigger plate. And that's why when you put capacitors in parallel, they simply add. So something to note on this problem that's true in general is for capacitors in parallel, C with a sub P on there, the way you get the total is you just add them up. C1 plus C2 plus dot, dot, dot. You notice capacitors in parallel add like resistors and um, resistors in series you, they act the opposite um, to the way that resistors act um, okay so that's how you handle um, capacitors in parallel actually turns out um, 
um, most, more, the most straightforward of the two cases.